Yes, sir. Well, we have one of the nice things to find out to coordinate this way. I never forget a green with the NGSM who does the audit. He's came here to bring us. He doesn't have a power up before you. It's his findings. And that's part of his findings. So, can you do that? And he's going to see the bridge. Mr. Kerry? Yes. Uh, I'm Kerry Williams with HHM CPAs. Uh, thank y'all for having us again to do the audit. Uh, always enjoy coming out here and working with Jesse and her team. Um, so, I'm going to try to take the financials, 100 and some pages, condense it into something for management. Um, so, the first couple slides will go over the required communications, uh, pretty standard stuff, and then highlight some of the uh, bigger items, bigger areas. Uh, first of all, our audit opinion was unmodified. It's a good, clean opinion, which is what we always want to see. Um, our responsibility is to perform the audit uh, according to general, generally accepted audit standards and government audit standards, which essentially means we're trying to obtain reasonable assurance that the financials are free of material misstatements. Um, because we don't look at every single transaction, there's always the possibility that one could be there, but that is the goal uh, of the audit. Um, as part of the audit, we are required to be compliant with best we are required to be independent of the city of Aniston. Um, the whole engagement team was independent uh, of the city. Uh, the plan, scope, and timing of the audit, that is all outlined in the engagement letter. We tried to perform the audit uh, within that scope and timing. Uh, significant accounting policies, those are all discussed in note one. The financials, there's a lot of those. Uh, the main thing that changed this year was GASB 96, implemented, <coughs> which is uh, related to subscription-based IT arrangements. Um, now being capitalized, if they meet certain requirements, we evaluated that, and there wasn't any material changes related to it, so that didn't really affect the city. Uh, county estimates, um, we evaluate management assessments to make sure they're reasonable. The main estimates, uh, Pension, OPEB, and then uh, depreciation of capital assets. Uh, management accounting staff, like I said, we always enjoy working with Jessica and her team. They do a great job. Uh, this was probably the easiest for us as far as making entries and uh, reconciling stuff. We didn't really have any issues, so it's all looking good. Um, next page. Uh, consultants and other accountants weren't aware of any other uh, accountants consultants been used. Corrected and uncorrected misstatements. Uh, we made some entries related to capital assets and adjusting interfund balances. Uh, other than that, there wasn't really a whole lot of adjustments. Deficiencies in internal control and compliance. We did not note any deficiencies in internal controls. Uh, fraud and illegal acts. We didn't. Uh, become aware of any fraudulent activities or any illegal activities going on, so that's always nice. Uh, difficulties, errors, we didn't have any during the audit. Uh, the representation letter, uh, we have certain representations for management, and those are all outlined in the management record letter that we did. Uh, no significant matters discussed and no findings. Uh, go over some of the financial highlights, look at the governmental funds, uh, some things to know, general fund, total assets, $32 million. Uh, for up to 23 of that is cash and investment, so it's good, uh, good amount of assets to be used. Uh, and then on the liability side, the $12.5 million, something to note that 9.7 of that is just uh, money held for ARPA funds, so no other big liabilities. Um, debt service fund, most of that is cash available. To, uh, and then the liabilities on the debt service fund are mostly due to the general fund. So uh, the ARPA fund, uh, the assets are grant funds used for projects, and all of that is deferred until it's spent. At that point, it is then earned. So, zero fund balance. Um, nothing major on the capital projects. The non-major funds, 
there's a lot of stuff that goes into that, but I'll, I won't begin to go through that. There's 20 some funds that are included in there, so that's all included in the other supplementary information and financials if you would like to dig deep into that. Uh, next slide, we go over the changes in these governmental funds for the fiscal year 23. <coughs> Something to note, the uh, general fund had a positive 6.5 million change this year, which looks good. Uh, debt service fund, most of the expenditures, 2.8 million was used on principal and interest, uh, 3.9 was transfers uh, to other funds. The next slide goes over the budgetary highlights from the general fund as this is the main fund of the city. Um, one thing, you can kind of see all the major departments, traditional public safety, public works, general government. Uh, the main thing to note here is the total revenues have a positive variance between final budget numbers and actual numbers. The revenues exceeded what we anticipate to collect, which is good. And then total expenditures. Uh, Actual numbers was below final budgeted uh, numbers, which is also good. The city staying within budgeted amounts, which is also what we'd like to see. So, overall, the general fund did really well when you compare budget to actual for the fiscal year 23. Next slide, kind of just look at the general fund balance. To expenditures over the year, uh, just to kind of see is it in good shape, is it kind of low, is it kind of high. Um, general fund balance as of year end had 20 million in it. Uh, total expenditures were 47 million. So uh, if you compare that to your expenditures for the year in months, you would have roughly five months worth of funds available to uh, keep performing operations. So that's a good fund balance. Um, we have no issues with that. Everything looks in order there. Um, this last slide is the single audit. So some years you have a single audit, some you don't. It all depends on how much federal funds you expend during the year. And this year, y'all met that requirement. Um, one thing to note is there were no material weaknesses identified during our evaluation of that. No significant deficiencies were noted. Uh, we also had a clean opinion on the single audit piece of disengagement, and no findings were noted. <clears throat> we uh, evaluated the ARPA grant program uh, during this testing, um, but the overall the single audit went really well, so no issues with that. Um, that's legit. Overall, it was a really good audit.
it is a it is been given to us as long as we put a water tank up there by the EDA. So we had an agreement for that. We also have an agreement with the EDA for them to contribute to this project. With that being said, we decided to proceed with the design portion of this, which on that, on the breakdown of the tank project cost, you can see it's about $2 million just for the tank itself, uh, two and a half for the transmission line to feed it, and some modifications to the booster pump station, which is already in place. That's saving some money there. Right? It's only about a $300,000 modification. And then with the uh, engineering and construction administration, you're, you're looking at another 150000 approximately. But the total project cost is around $5 million. Now, what does this project do? This project will supply water to some of the higher elevations around Thomas Hill, allow that to be delivered. Also, allow some projects along the east, uh, Western Bypass, Eastern Bypass to be served, which they, they will never be served. As it stands now, there'd be no development there or anything because there's no water line there. If there were something built there, the elevations would not be able to do that. So, that being said, I, I've had some positive feedback from the EDA, from the county commissions. They, they looked into possibly trying to contribute on this too. Everybody in the county in this area has been positive about this project because it is a Probably the best way of developing the McCullough area. So, if the council has any questions, I'd like to answer them if I can. I do think that ultimately, for McClellan to be put to its highest and best use, we should have got part of This is absolutely a necessity, and I will say that we're continuing to work with our federal partners with respect to funding. So, Nick, can, can you speak to the potential timeline? Right. 
is it three? Because that they may have changed some with the um, three consecutive weeks. Okay. And well, it is the uh, worst bit law too. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And so, and you have to go to it used to be three major newspapers. I'm not even sure if that's still the same or not. There's yeah. an application now. You do it yeah. online because nobody nobody uses newspapers. Well, I mean, no, Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson may disagree with that. We'll, we'll from there. At least for that. Yeah. yeah. I still do. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 
have a sign on it. We're going to get the okay. you know, if you go approve it, we can get the sign on it real quick. Okay. It's already there. We'll have to worry about it anymore. This week we might put that on our next agenda, the first one in November. Yes, sir. Maybe next year, because I think we don't have, you know, we only have one meeting on one picture. I think we have one meeting on one picture. This is the second meeting. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
we sort of got ourselves in a situation on, uh, and I said that you all got a copy of the photo and I uh, hope you had a chance to look at it, but it's on uh, 15th Street at Glen Addy and 15th. Right there, you know where they built the, uh, a, the, the tax thing, the building that's there, there's a park lot that's adjacent to it. And then at the park lot, the bus to that park lot there is a alleyway that goes there that, at, that's been there. But what we found out after a survey was done by the owner of, this, the, owner of the building, he found out that where the, where the alleyway was, was not our right way. It was actually his property. So he petitioned to put the fence there, which it in turn locks the alleyway so you can't get back there. There's somebody can't get their driveway or anything else. After we researched it, public works with our engineer, we found out he was correct. We cannot stop the building there. So we found that our right of way is really the grassy area. So what we looked at in order to remedy this, and I've talked with Councilman uh, Roberts, but that's his area, and we've had this conversation because it's become a Battle between two, but it's one of those things that we got fixed by some citizens that are going to be affected by. It. So we figured out that we can actually place them that we do the alleyway on the right on our right away, but it's going to cost about thirteen thousand dollars. We have those funds available, and I, uh, and I just need the councils not to go and move forward. We've already got an estimate regarding it, yet, but it's causing a big uh, 15th Street is really in disarray down there. So, we, but we got to do something. And that's the quickest way we can fix it. Graveling it is not going to fix it because if we gravel it, we still, you're talking about it's a lot of work. And we'd be better just going to do one time instead of putting gravel and have to come back. You know, figure out we could do it this way. We already got somebody in place. It's a public works project that we would then not have to be did. We could move forward with it right away if that council is doing that. The other thing is, uh, I gave you all a copy, and I think some of you are aware of this, that the uh, that, that lead bill, mountain bike race, uh, that NEBA has been really an effort for quite some time. It's really a big, a big event. And um, they've come down with this. There's not one, there's not a qualifier in the Southeast. But after doing some work, I think Rare started a meeting with the NEBA, and I had to a couple of meetings with NEBA. They got them come down. They really like this. I'll move from people, three other, three other cities in the right there's kind of like there six initial. Chattanooga was in there, um, several across Southeast. The two finals for us in Roanoke, Virginia. Okay. And we beat out Roanoke for the. So we have guys who want to make this announcement. So they haven't selected us, but it's one thing they want a middle letter from us. And the middle letter is because if they come in, they want to be committed for three years. The middle letter is just action by the, from the mayor with council approval that we just be doing for commit to. Uh, in kind of services on it. This will be in conjunction with the fat topics that we do every year. So we already do in kind. There's no monetary uh, uh, commitment to action for this. It's no different than what we do for the fat tire, for the No Street Festival, or anything else. But only thing about it, they need something to make sure that we all in on this. Uh, I've talked with Parks and Recreation, I've all talked to Marcus. You know, there's been some money that's been given for those trails that's already in. Already in the Cofers had the Community Foundation North East Alabama. Everything needs to be done, can be done to make this happen. It's just to talk about in kind. Of, you all see the in kind of action for it. That's nothing mm -hmm. different than we already do at Fat Tire Fest. So, my question is that we would like, we'd like to do, since this is one of the things that's ongoing, is that at least do a, uh, add to the agenda tonight a, uh, a uh, motion. For the mayor to actually do this letter so we can get it sent out so they can make an announcement. They would like to make an announcement that in the morning. So that's the council. Yeah, I don't know about that at all. Yeah, I would just say this is, this is a huge um, win for the city of Anderson. This is international mountain bike race that these qualifiers occur. Yeah, yeah, that is, is, is it's a massive mountain bike like race. It's probably, it's like doing the Boston Marathon. You have to qualify to go. Right? Wow. You know, and not just the mountain bike race, they also have a little bit of 100 foot race, trail race, and it'll be a qualifier for the mountain race one day, the trail race the next day. They're looking at anywhere, I don't know, year three, having anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 participants in each event. So you're talking two to 3,000 spectators, I mean, participants and spectators. You're talking $4 million a year, big company impact. Right. It's huge. And I mean, to the extent that we're not already squarely on the map, this yeah, would absolutely 
take that property so long as the mortgage is outstanding. You know? right. uh, so we're already secondary, and this is just kind of acknowledging that we are already secondary with respect to any deeds out there which we have a reversionary interest. And the other thing is just a little bit stronger. This is it, it came to us last night. This is it. They, the CEO was just here and told us that um, that this is the last thing they need. They were they don't they kind of caught them off guard that they needed this, but this is the last thing they need. And the lawyer told me that the loan will be funded tomorrow, uh, which is not a moment to soon, given that the refinancing. Thank <laughs> you. 